Uh, my name is Josh Milton and this is the teacher video that's due for class HAE 611 and for my subject today we'll be talking about range of motion and we'll be specifically talking about range of motion in the um, in the elbow and the, uh, the shoulder the elbow and the shoulder so the goals for this lesson is to um, make sure students understand the different ranges um, of range of motion make sure they understand the instruments used to measure range of motion and um, also make sure they, that they understand what what actually is range of motion what, what is the, the per se definition of alright so first thing we'll uh, discuss is that last that last goal that I mentioned uh, what is range of motion so if you needed just a book definition for it, range of motion would be the range with which a joint can be moved so if I'm talking about the, the elbow, I mean all of these motions. If I'm talking about the shoulder, I mean all of those motions, all right? And uh, obviously it's measured in degrees and it can be, can be performed actively, passively, or active assisted, all right? And um, I have a PowerPoint here, so if I had a, if students was in the class, they'd be following along with the PowerPoint. So um, tools to measure range of motion would be a goniometer, and with this, uh, inside the PowerPoint I have a link here to a video that will show students how to um, measure this range of motion with the goniometer and it will show them all of the different kinds of goniometers we use so in physical therapy you have goniometers for your shoulders you have some different for cervical um, issues you have different ones for your hands and you also have different ones for your ankles and just about any any part of your body, there's a, a special goniometer used specifically for that body part. Okay, so that's the second thing. How do we use? So we've covered what is range of motion. How do we how do we measure it with the goniometer? And la and next we'll just get into some different ranges of uh, of motion in the different body parts that we discussed earlier. So first one is the shoulder. So to even begin knowing what range of motion is you need to know the bones that um that make up that that body part so first off you have the humor in the shoulder you have the humerus the clavicle and the scapula so they all sit together to form what's called your shoulder girdle and inside that shoulder girdle is how is the how the shoulder uh how the humerus sits inside the, the clavicle and it moves around that's what gives you that shoulder movement and also, along with knowing the um, the bony anatomy of, you also have to know the musculature of that of the body part. So you need to know all of the muscles to know what and their actions and sometimes insertions to know how that how that uh, body part will move. And um, so muscles of the shoulder are the biceps. You have your long head and your short head, the triceps, supraspinatus, subscapularis, and the brachialis all of those muscles are associated with the shoulder to be able to make it you know um extend flex uh abduct adduct all of those different things all of those different muscles are what help help their shoulder to make those movements so this is um the last goal of it was to know the different ranges of motion for it so for the so for the shoulder specifically the range of motion uh, for flexion is 150 degrees. 150 degrees for extension, it is 50 degrees. For abduction, it's also 150 degrees. And for adduction, it's 30 degrees. So make sure that we all know those different ranges of motion because they are very important. Because obviously if the range of motion is not in one of those specific ranges, we have a problem. We have some sort of deficit that we need to get fixed. That's why range of motion is so important. So we can know what, what our patient is at and then we can know what we need to do to get to where we need to be at. Alright, next in the, um, in the PowerPoint I have a video uh, showing some passive range of motion. I have a video showing some active range of motion and then and um, after these sessions, I would, we would, the class would get up, partner up, and then they would do some group work with each other. They would um, perform the, the different ranges of motion on each other. So that would be another um, method of teaching that. Then we would go to the next part of the lesson, which would be uh, elbow anatomy. 
So just as we have to know all of the bones and the muscles of the shoulder, we need to do the same with the elbow. So the bones of the elbow are the ulna and the radius. Now these two are tricky, so it's important that we um that we know that we are able to separate the two uh the two structures. Alright, and then the muscles of the elbow, it's about 15 to 20 muscles. So you see them there on the PowerPoint. I'm not gonna name them all, but they're all on this PowerPoint on the page on the picture attached to it. You can just see the um the muscles very plainly. Alright, so the range of motion values for the elbow um, extension would be zero, obviously because of this um, the articulation between the two bones, we're not able to extend. So if you are able to extend, like I said before with the um, with the shoulder, we have a problem. We have some some sort of joint laxity that we need to get fixed, or there may be uh, um, that could even be a, a bone problem. So we would need to um, get some MRIs, some X-rays done to see what's going on in there. Uh, so flexion is 150 degrees. Pronation would be 80 degrees. Supination would be another 80 degrees. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, then after that, I have another video showing what elbow passive range of motion is. Then I have a video showing what elbow active range of motion is. And then once again after that, the class will partner up and they would um, perform the, the different ranges of motion on each other. And while they were doing that, both the shoulder and the elbow, I would be giving them feedback. So um, I would have modeling, cooperative learning, which would be the group work working with each other, and then I would be um, providing feedback. So that would be my three um, teaching teaching strategies there. And after we were done, I'd give them some homework to do, which would be just a, a simple worksheet on the different ranges of motion. And that would be my lesson. So, again, once again, my name is Josh Milton, and my lesson was range of motion. My goals were to um, get students to understand what exactly was range of motion and why it is important. Was to get them to know um, what we use to measure range of motion, and also just some some of the most important ranges of motion in the shoulder and the elbow. And that that is my um, this is my teacher video.